can't tell this crowd much they don't already know about Greg. Um, contrary to how it may appear, I am the youngest. <laughs> and he was about five years and six months, give or take a month or so, um, older than me. As such, uh, I didn't really play sports with him as much as I watched him play sports. And over these last few days, we've been <clears throat> talking, and uh, the best way I can describe him is, is fearless. Um, he was about 5'8", 170 pounds, but he, um, he played a whole lot bigger than that. Um, he really feared no man that I, that I saw, uh, sometimes to a detriment. <laughs> but he, he was fearless. You know, for a fifth or sixth grader, when you um, when your big brothers scoring touchdowns on Friday night and uh, their names in the paper on Saturday, that's a big deal. Um, <clears throat> back to the fly fishing. <laughs> um, you know, Daddy taught all three of us how to fish. Very young age. Um, Greg took it to another level. He uh, he was an artist with, with a fly rod. Um, I, there was one particular trip where um, I was in high school, he was in college. And, uh, he brought a couple of college friends home with him and we, we, we made a trip from uh, a place they used to spend a lot of high school time called Wolf Ford. Uh, and we fished down through Turkey Pen. That's about a about an eighteen mile trek, four day trip. Um, fish in the mornings, fish in the evenings, pack camp, hike during the day. Um, for those four days, I was on his hip, um, and I learned stuff that um, about fly fishing that I'll never forget. Um, I want to thank. Chaplain Jeremiah and all you folks for coming. Um, I'll just end with the fact that, um, you know, Greg was no saint, um, nor are any of us. Um, he had challenges. Um, he, uh, he did the best he could. Um, but I think we get the option of either remembering the good stuff or the bad stuff. I'll take the good stuff. Well, it's uh, good to see all of you. I hadn't seen some of you in years and years. And unfortunately, uh, it's these types of events when, when we reconnect. But I'm glad you're here. And Greg wanted me to uh, uh, make all of you aware of how awesome uh, this hospital is and how awesome that hospice uh, was to him and, and to our family. Uh, to a person, and, I, and you know, not only did the poem mean a lot that he read, but uh, Gabriel, who wrote it, cared for Greg, and uh, Pat, one of the nurses up here, the oncologist, uh, all the folks at hospice, uh, absolutely wonderful people. And you know, through the course of the day, we all have our occupations, but uh, it was moving uh, to me, and it's my first experience in watching them do their work uh, on somebody that I love. So it, it had a, a big impact on me. Uh, I was closer in age to Greg, and, and uh, we did get an opportunity to play on a lot of the same teams, and it was, uh, it was very cool. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of success. Uh, as far as competing goes, it was like uh, if you if you told him you couldn't do it, he wanted to do it harder. And and uh, a lot of folks that aren't here have called to express their condolences. One of one of them last night was uh, Ronnie Reeves. 
and uh, hadn't talked to Ronnie in a long time. Ronnie could fly, uh, fastest kid in the school, but he never played football uh, before. So when they were midgets on the midget team, uh, they put him back there and, and uh, said, you watch Greg. And so Ronnie was telling me last night, uh, Greg taught him how to play the game, how to line up and do the plays. And Ronnie always called Greg the captain. And uh, I just, that's what he called him. And he's the only person I know that called him that. And I never knew why. So last night I asked him. And he said, uh, he got us into a lot of tight spots. And he said, but he always had a plan about how to get us out. <laughs> so, he said, so he said, so I called him the captain. And uh, uh, it was so good to hear his voice. It's so good to see all of you. Unfortunately, uh, under these circumstances, it's sad, but but I gotta tell you, and it made me feel better when I left here, so I'm gonna share it with you, so hopefully you'll feel better when you leave here. But uh, I'm standing there at the end of the bed after they had done the biopsy and got the results. You got an oncologist, a regular doctor, head nurse, a couple of uh, attendants, and uh, they told us the situation. You know, you've got lung cancer, you have an aggressive kind of lung cancer, and uh, you can do this and try to prolong your life, or you can do this and manage your pain. And uh, without hesitation, he said, uh, let's manage some pain. I've been in some pain, and I want to uh, take care of it. And uh, I never, never flinched. Uh, he, uh, he asked me to get him a couple things. He asked me to get him two books. One was one that Keith gave him last Christmas, uh, uh, written by Neil Young, uh, called uh, Waging Heavy Peace, and he wanted his Bible. Uh, he wanted to call about uh, six or seven people. He wanted me to get the telephone number so he could do that. And uh, I asked him if he understood everything. He did. And then I. Uh, a lady walked in and uh, when we got over to hospice and was going to take his uh, breakfast order, what he wanted to eat each day. And uh, in typical Greg style, uh, she said, Mr. McGrath, do you eat breakfast? And he said, yes, I do. And she said, well, what would you like to have for breakfast? He said, eggs, scrambled, two. Applewood, smoked bacon. You know, and this, he was uh, he was putting on a show. So uh, uh, he wasn't afraid to die. Uh, he's read the Bible cover to cover twice, and uh, through the course of his uh, journey, uh, he got better with age. And. Uh, proud to be his brother and uh, and uh, he's no longer in pain with our mother. 